uh, they're keeping a good pace at this stage. It's not so cold, it's minus 12, minus 15 degrees. Uh, so with the clothing they have, they had to take some layers off uh, to make good progress and not to sweat too much. We're not only on the ice to reach the pole, but we had to take some snow samples to do some research that Roswitha of the University of Munich has asked us to do. And the young explorers have uh, done two days of complete research where they've tested the snow. They're writing down the conductivity of the snow and the ice that has been melted inside the tent at this stage. And that will give us a good example on the amount of snow cover uh, that we find on the Arctic Ocean today. So we have to haul this equipment along with us and uh, they have to do the job. The job has been well done until now and hopefully we'll have another day as we reach uh, closer to 80 degrees north where we can do some more tests. One of our tasks from Roswitha, from the University of Munich, is to make these bottles. In these bottles we've got the GPS location, the date and who we are. Then we'll drop these bottles in the ice and through the ice drift it will go somewhere and whoever finds it should report back to us and then we'll be able to find out how the ice drifts and where it goes to. We've been eating quite well, slowly but surely they're increasing their calorie intake and hopefully in the next five, six days we'll get to about 6,000 calories and then extend our day to more or less eight hours. So it's looking good. Hopefully they can keep up the pace and as the days get longer they'll need more sleep and uh, they'll need uh, basically less time eating, drinking and pitching their camp. So that will condense the time spent for walking and not for so much socializing. Uh, I'm having blisters on both of my feet. These developed on the second day and by the fourth day I was walking with no skin on the back of my feet and it was really flesh that I was walking on and during walking it was really I felt every step and at one time I was I was crying during walking <laughs> really struggled but now it's getting better it's healing when I went to the North Pole I walked until I could see my Achilles tendon so I, I, I basically learned my lesson and today there's only one solution and uh, that solution you can read in my next book. <laughs> <laughs> We're on day seven of the expedition and uh, the first four days went well. The fifth day Saskia uh, took her sunglasses off and she burned her eyes. It was my own stupidity. I didn't wear my glasses all the time. And then yesterday I felt that my eyes hurt a bit and everything seemed to be foggy. But unfortunately, now oh, it, it's even worse. And every time I close my eyes, it hurts a lot. And it's, it's like a pain attack. We decided after two hours of walk uh, to stop the expedition, uh, to put Saskia in the tent, uh, to put tea bags on her eyes, to darken her eyes uh, and keep her out of the sun. This has taken a little bit of a toll uh, on the outcome of the expedition because we had to make some decisions on continuing on with this expedition with only a limited amount of people that can fit into one twin otter. We have to now cover a distance of about 25 kilometers a day to reach the pole in the allotted time. My biggest concern for the rest of the trip is obviously weather, open water and then the moral of the young explorers. <laughs>